You know, when it comes to God's will for our lives, I've discovered that most people are just trying to figure out what they should do today. They're asking questions like, who should I marry? Where should I live? Where should I go to college? What career should I pursue? Of course, we all want to do something great with our lives. But to be honest, it's usually these questions that are weighing on people's minds the most. I remember several years ago after I'd finished preaching on the kingdom, one of the elders of the church approached me. Apparently, he thought my message was a bit too abstract. He said, you know, young man, all these lofty ideals are wonderful, but most of the people in the church are just trying to figure out how to pay their bills and get along with their spouse and raise their kids and do a good job at work. I really didn't like what he had to say. But after I thought about it for a while, I realized that in many ways this man was right. I think most Christians really do think of the kingdom of God as this abstract, ethereal, religious concept so reverent that it's best left to their pastor or somebody more spiritual than them. It reminds me of what the famous psychologist Abraham Maslow used to teach. He developed this concept of a hierarchy of needs, which he illustrated with a pyramid like the one that you see here. And you'll notice that it contains several distinct layers. At the bottom of the pyramid, the foundation was represented by the basic human necessities, the physiological needs, things like oxygen and food and sleep. Now, the idea is that as you go higher on the pyramid, the needs and the concerns become more and more complicated as you go. Once you've met the basic needs at the bottom, then you begin to become concerned about things like the security of your body and of your finances in the second layer. By the time you get to the third layer, there is the need for love and belonging in a family and other relationships and so on. Now, when you finally reach the very top of the pyramid, the pinnacle, this is where you would find the loftiest ideals. Maslow called this the place of self-actualization. This is where a person becomes interested in things like morality and spirituality and even creativity. This is surely the category where Maslow would have placed something as spiritual as the pursuit of the kingdom of God. Now, it was Maslow's opinion that in order to reach the top of the pyramid, what you had to do was to start at the bottom by meeting the basic necessities first. In other words, if a person didn't have food on the table, they wouldn't be interested in something as abstract as the kingdom of God. Now, admittedly, this does seem to be the most intuitive approach to life, doesn't it? Let's concentrate first on putting food on the table and paying the bills, and then we can think about something spiritual like the kingdom of God. It seems so practical. It seems so responsible. But what Jesus taught is actually the exact opposite. Look at what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6. He said, don't worry about what you'll eat. Don't worry about what you'll wear. Your Father in heaven knows that you need these things, and he will take care of you. Instead, Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God, and all of these things will be added unto you. What Jesus was teaching was the exact opposite of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Jesus taught us to start first at the pinnacle. And then he said, if you begin at that highest place, put the kingdom of God first, everything else will be taken care of. Now, he doesn't take the time to tell us exactly what these things are. He just calls them all these things. Physical, mental, and emotional needs are all included. Now, the reason that this seems so counterintuitive to most people is that the pressing needs of life, things like food and friends and finances, they're so close to us. We feel them right now, so they seem extremely important. But actually, this is just an illusion. In reality, all of these things are actually very, very small. But it's a matter of perspective. In order to put all these things in their proper perspective, what you have to do is take a step back and view them in the light of eternity. View them in the context of the kingdom of God and suddenly something becomes clear. When you compare all of these things to the kingdom of God in the context of eternity, they are actually extremely minute and minuscule. In fact, right now, since I put this into the proper perspective, you probably can't even read the words on the base of this pyramid. So let me Move it a little bit closer. Jesus taught us to seek the kingdom of God first because Jesus had 
and eternal perspective. And as we've just learned, your perspective makes all the difference. So if you want to know what job God has for you, seek his kingdom and you'll find your occupational calling. Do you want to know who you should marry? Seek God's kingdom and you'll find your spouse. Do you want to know where you should go to college? Seek God's kingdom and you'll land in the right school. Do you want to know where you should live? Well, seek the kingdom of God, my friend, and he'll lead you to the right geographical location. My friend, here's the bottom line. Don't waste your life seeking all of these things. Seek the kingdom of God first, and all of these things will be taken care of. Perspective makes a big difference, doesn't it? You see what I'm trying to get across to you today, that if the kingdom of God is our priority, if we really see it in its proper context, then it's obvious that we should be seeking it first. A person who isn't seeking the kingdom of God first doesn't realize how significant it is and how everything else in this world pales in comparison to it. Amen?